and good morning. Today is Monday. I'm pumped to come to you with today's word and encouragement. Now, I hope that this fires you up to read the Bible more. I hope this fires you up to say, hey, man, if James can do it, I can do it. Um, if James can be a man after God, God, God's own heart, I can do it, too. I can be a woman or man after God's own heart. I believe we're all called to be that way. And why? Because we're children of God. Uh, I was up this morning, speaking of children, at 2.30 with uh, Tallulah. And, man, she's so sweet. I was cuddling her. But my flesh was like, man, you've been up sporadically for the past month in and out at 1 a.m. Can you just let me sleep? And the Spirit reminded me, like, hey, man, when she's 16 years old, even if she does say, hey, Dad, can you cuddle me and help me go to sleep, which I will, it's not going to be the same cuddles. Uh, nothing like holding a baby on your shoulder and cuddling so something so sweet and innocent and pure close to your body and speaking life into her, praying for her. Um, I mean, I, I feel that that hug. What, yesterday, Sophia hugged me. And she's just mimicking me. She's rubbing my back like I rubbed hers. And man, I felt that hug. I still feel that this morning, a, a day later. So, so special. But with that being said, it's early, it's 439. I'm running a little late. I get, I get to go out and train on the mountain here in a second after I do this. Stark out right now. But it wasn't this, it wasn't, it was even darker in Egypt so long ago with this ninth plague, the plague of darkness. Here's chapter 10, verse 23. It says, no one could see anyone else or move about for three days because of this plague, plague of darkness. And after the grasshoppers, once again, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. So God immediately throws the plague of darkness over Egypt. And it's devastating. I could, could you imagine not moving about for three days? But the Israelites had light in places where they lived. And I love this seemingly foreshadowing of Jesus. Jesus conquered death on the third day he rose to life. And in that middle of, of death to life, this conquering of darkness, we can't put words to it. We can't explain it. But what we do know is that he took the keys. He knocked on hell potentially. He said, hey, hey, I have death now. You have no reign over my people. And Jesus gave us the promised Holy Spirit. So in that same sense in Egypt, where uh, the Egyptians are being smothered, evil is being smothered in darkness, the Israelites are given the light of God. Why? Because they are set apart. What that means basically is they're the priests of the nations. They're God's chosen people, set apart for others to say, hey, I see God in you. I see the light. I want to know more. And as a result, they join as believers of God and become believers of God and are now chosen with Israel. But here's, here's the, I, I just wonder how many people saw this light and, and were transformed. I, I just got to wonder how many people were transformed. There's got to be a ton of folks that saw this and was like, man, we can't do it anymore because the Egyptians were known, and here's what the commentary says, as worshiping and or as known as the son of Re, this 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 Egyptian sun god. So once again, God is smothering the small g gods of Pharaoh in this nation so that the whole world may know him. And it, for you and me, here's here's the challenge, here's the application of today is that we have been given the same light and the plague of darkness that surrounds the world. And this is, as Jesus said, this is kind of Satan's dominion. He rules earth. He prowls around like a roaring lion ready to devour. So what does that mean for you and me? We have to stay equipped. We have to stay not out of fear of Satan, but out of fear and love of God. That in us, because of sin and because of Satan in the world, we must be and act like his children. We're not sons and daughters of the son of Ray, the sun God. We're sons and daughters of the most high, one and only true God. And as a result, we must like it. 
And here's my challenge, and here's the truth I want to encourage you with today. It comes out of John 14, uh, verse 21, where, where Satan and his minions and rules the world. That's the same chapter of John. But Jesus says this, I will not leave you as orphans. John 14, verse 18. Thus, what that means is you and I have the promised Holy Spirit. And that means we can grow in the knowledge of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God for all eternity. All eternity. And here's the challenge because we have the light. Go, and for the sake of life and death, be the light in a hurting world. We are set apart. We must act like it. So practically, a few things. You are what you eat is a statement that I love to live by. What you put in your body, you will eventually become. What you put in your ears, you'll become. What you see, you'll become. What you speak, you'll become. What you think, you'll become. And all these things can be molded and shaped by walking in the truth of God. And we, we must do that. We're called to do that. Just like verse 21 of chapter 14 of John says, Whoever has my commands and keep them, keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. I promise you, you want the God of the universe, the God who can cause darkness to smother Egypt for three days. The God who can raise his only son back to life for you and me. You want that God to show himself to you every day, and he will, and he can. How do you keep his commands? How do you love him? You get to know him every single day. And word and deed, through reading scripture and through worshiping him and praising him all the days of your life. And like David, you too, and I will say, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 